Senator Hatch, great to have you on the show. Well, nice to be with you, Jenny. You have introduced a bill I think a lot of people would agree is long overdue, the Firearms Interstate Commerce Act. Tell us about what prompted you to do this. Well, you know, the, uh, some of the old provisions in the Gun Control Act of 1968 fail the test. They lack common sense. They're unfair. They're burdensome. They're outdated, and based on the technology we have now, now, the bill that Senator Begich of Alaska and I introduced, called the Firearms Interstate Commerce Reform Act, that removes a number of restrictions from the Gun Control Act of 1968, which prohibited consumers from purchasing handguns from a dealer in another state. And, you know, for years, rifles and shotguns uh, could be purchased across state lines so long as the transaction was legal in both the dealer and the purchaser states. But because people were worried about background checks, which at the time could take days, mm -hmm. interstate handgun purchases were prohibited entirely uh, and, and just plain stopped. However, since 1998, all people buying firearms from dealers in the U.S. are subject to computerized checks under the FBI's National Instant Criminal Background Check System. Now, these background checks are fast, they're convenient, and they're widely available. And this type of technology was unforeseen in 1968, so there's really no longer any reason for federal law to treat interstate handgun purchasers any differently than any other firearms uh, transactions. And under our bill, the handgun purchasers uh, or purchases would be the same as any other firearms purchase. So long as the transaction takes place in person and complies with the laws in both the vendor and the buyer states, including state laws requiring handgun certificates or waiting periods, the purchase will be legal. And, you know, to me, this change is really just common sense. Yeah, really, when you look at it, when you consider when you, the background check and how long ago that was w and put in place, as you were saying, many of these restrictions made obsolete by that. Well, that's right. And modern technology has made what once may have seemed like a reasonable restriction on gun rights really onerous and tedious by today's standards. So... This legislation really enhances the Second Amendment uh, rights of law-abiding gun owners. And I really want to tell you, I appreciate the NRA's support of the bill. That really helps a lot. I know, and they were glad. I'm sure gun dealers and, and, and people buying farms across the country are, are thrilled to see this going on. But did you actually hear from constituents about problems they were having? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, Got any I good have stories? to say, when it comes to the Second Amendment rights, uh, Utah is just filled with <laughs> a lot of people just like you and me. There's a lot of feeling out there in my state, yeah. that uh, some of these over-regulators over uh, uh, really don't make sense. Yeah. Support for the bill, how's it looking? Well, uh, we're going to keep pushing it. Uh, we'll just put it that way. Uh, uh, and and uh, it would be a new law, and it would certainly uh, resolve some of these conflicts and problems that we've had. So if people want to send an email or They contact, need to weigh in. Okay. Where, what's the status of the bill so they can let their lawmakers know? Right now it's filed, and uh, we're just going to move on from there. All righty. Switching gears just, if I can, for a second. Sure. I, I wanted to ask you about an amendment you supported this week that would cut off funds for any program, like the ATF's Operation Fast and Furious, that allowed thousands of guns to walk across the border right into the hands of the drug cartels. Your thoughts on why it was so important, what we're looking at, obviously, to get this passed. Well, keep in mind, that had to be one of the dumbest episodes in our country's history. Uh, I think people are so sick of uh, some of these dumb decisions made by some of the people in our Justice Department and, and ATF that, uh, uh, you know, that's why everybody voted to... Uh, voted that way. Absolutely. And you're watching this, seeing all of these documents, not all the ones that they've asked, but so far the documents they have gotten showing top officers in the Justice Department knew about this. Any doubt in your mind that what we're looking at right now is a cover-up from this administration? Well, it's a real scandal. And, uh, you know, the, I, if I was advising the Attorney General, I'd tell him to make this as transparent as possible. I give up the documents, uh, make whatever explanations have to be made, and let's go from there. I mean, it's it's really a scandal. It's it, just awful. It really is. You've got a dead Border Patrol agent, uh, you know, and you're looking at this, and, and, and they've had to subpoena Eric Holder just to try to get Holder to come clean with the facts. Well, I, th I take Holder's word that... Uh, that he, you know, didn't remember reading the emails or the 
or the, uh, the you know the the notices the uh, that the staff had, had given. But my gosh, uh, that's no excuse for not cooperating. It's no excuse for not uh, trying to clear this mess up. No excuse for not. Uh, uh, letting us know who's responsible for that. Absolutely. You think we're going to need to call for a special prosecutor? Well, uh, yeah. I'm, I, for one, am not real enthused about those special prosecutors. I've seen them be so wrong in the past, uh, and I'll cite, uh, you know, some in the Reagan administration that uh, I'm not real excited about that. But, you know, the attorney general will be coming uh, before the judiciary next month. Mm-hmm. He's, he's going to have a lot of questions he's going to have to answer. I'm sure he knows that because considering what's going on with these documents. And, and like you said, you know, they've made it so impossible. They've asked for the documents. We're looking at eight months down the road, and they still haven't gotten what they've asked for. And I'm talking about Congressman Issa. Well, and, and that's, that's, that's disgraceful because, you know, we have an obligation here in Congress to oversee these matters. You know, we overview them, and there ought to be total cooperation on these type of things. And, you know, so far it just looks like, you know, there is no cooperation. Now, I personally like the attorney general, but, my gosh, there's no excuse for – okay, I'll give, him, I'll give him the fact that uh, he says he didn't see the memos from, from staff. But now that he has seen them, <laughs> you know – uh, he he needs to act with dispatch. He needs to he needs to you know own up to whatever they have to own up to, and uh, that's the way to handle this matter. And I think uh, I, I would, my advice to him would be do it sooner as soon as he can.